Uh, well, good morning. Great to be with you all. And, uh, and it's good to hear little babies as well. So we're used to doing this kind of thing with little ones in the room. Um, uh, just a quick couple, couple things. Um, been married for 28 years. My wife, uh, uh, Jody, and I just celebrated anniversary in August. And uh, we're actually making a little longer weekend this weekend to actually celebrate it because we didn't really get to celebrate it. So we're going to do that and enjoy the beautiful countryside here. Um, we have uh, four children. We've homeschooled all of them. Two of them are out of the house and, um, and, uh, and doing well. And then we've got two still in the home. And uh, it has been such an incredible journey. And uh, as, uh, as John said, <clears throat> th this is a first. I've never been asked to teach on home education. However, um, the Lord gave us early on a really heart for um, uh, families. Um, we have a passion for families, particularly for uh, parents and for fathers to encourage them because as fathers go generally, so goes the family and as the family goes, so goes society. And we're certainly seeing uh, that the results of that uh, or lack of the family unit, um, the impact it has had on society. And so we, uh, when we came to, to, to Great Britain, we, we recognized right away that there wasn't a lot of um, teaching or there weren't a lot of resources on biblical parenting. And so we have made a point at our church in, in, in Calvary Chapel in Cardiff to run biblical parenting courses every year, particularly when we have um, new families or uh, young ones that come in, we offer it. And, and even those that have been through it, go right back through it again because you also need those refreshers and reminders like, oh yeah, I got to stay on task. And so um, it's really important to us. Oh, there it is. I can project if that's better and not use that. It's probably easier than the ringing. Uh, but anyway, we, uh, we uh, basically will take a lot of the principles that we use in parenting and we're using those same things in homeschooling, uh, but we'll try to get a little bit more honed in on some of the points. But I just want you to know from the beginning that um, uh, what our heart is behind this. None of us are perfect. None of us have uh, fully uh, arrived in the sense of parenting uh, or even in the sense of being home, good homeschool uh, parents. Uh, we're just simply uh, people who, uh, well, we made our own mistakes. Uh, we've sought um, wisdom from others who were further down the road than us along the way. And, um, and we made changes. We sought to be biblical and intentional in our parenting. Um, and that led us to homeschooling eventually, really. So we're simply people who just, we may be just a little bit further down the road than some of you, uh, but, but we, we by no means have um, arrived. So we wanted to just uh, um, start with that. We also want to encourage you today to just um, take, take notes, make, make notes particularly of questions as you go along the way here. Um, this first one is going to be a bit of a fire hose here because, uh, um, actually, I don't even know how long I have. Do I have till, till noon, is it? Until somewhere around there? Okay. Um, and uh, so make notes. Now. I'd like to find out more about that. We really, really, really would love to interact with you uh, in between. But the middle session, as you heard, will be much more interactive um, as we get down to the nitty gritty. How do you actually do home, uh, homeschooling? Um, there are a lot of resources that we've been mentioned. And in the booklets that are being passed out, there is a resource list at the back. Um, so a lot of these things hopefully will be helpful to you. There are websites. There's books that we've used, curriculum ideas, and things uh, like that. Uh, overall, this is going to be uh, biblically based, um, but some things are, are also sort of philosophical. Uh, what's, the, what's the philosophy behind um, uh, how we rear our children in terms of what ages they are? There's practical things we have to understand there. And so I am implementing some of those things in here, but to get the full understanding of some of those things, we put the resource in here of our website, uh, calvarycdf.uk, on there there is um, our biblical parenting seminar. You can actually listen to it. I believe the one we recorded, John, I think you guys are there. I think little babies that you hear in the background might be some of yours. Um, but anyway, um, we since then have done it even more. We didn't have kids that were in the uh, older stages where you're kind of more transferring from um, establishing authority in the home and moving into more of a coaching role. And so we recently did those last November and um, have yet to put those on the site. But if you have kids in that age range, we'll be putting those up soon. But let me just draw your attention to the, your booklets there, if you wouldn't mind just opening up the first, um, really, the seminar this morning is really just the big picture, just giving you the importance of Christian home education. Um, and two things, just as we start here, that 
I want you to understand this will do for you. Two things home, home education will do for you, and you need to embrace these things. Uh, one, it's gonna refine you. Um, parenting, as you are, are, are sure aware at this point, is a refining process. Um, and you add homeschooling in the mix there, it's gonna refine you even more. Um, parenting is, is difficult. Uh, parenting is a, a relentless job. Our, our phrase we use all the time, it's inconvenient because there's no convenient time to, to parent. It'll always inconvenient you if you want to parent your children the, biblically um, and to uh, correct when you need to correct and, and, and handle the kids in the proper uh, way. Uh, Jesus' words to deny ourselves, to take up our uh, crosses, to, um, to, to really um, give our all to him, it, it's really the, the denying ourselves that will happen in parenting. Parenting demands your, your personal time. You're going to have undisturbed disturbed sleep, aren't you? Parents know that. Physical energy will be sapped, emotional uh, energy. Um, even you have to sacrifice wealth and dreams and aspirations, all for the sake of, of rearing your children. And as fallen people, we don't surrender things really easily, do we? So it will refine you. Um, but I think parenting is a great furnace that God takes us through to shape our hearts and to make us more uh, like Christ. And our children help us to surrender those objects of affection in our lives that we would maybe not uh, so easily surrender, but we need to. Uh, so the second thing it will do, so that's where, and we kind of put little blanks there. So if you want to fill it in, you can do that. But that was the first, and it will refine you as a parent. The second one, it will instruct you as a parent. Um, not only will you have those options, uh, sorry, objects and uh, affections that interfere with your relationship with God uh, stripped away from you, but you're also going to receive divine instruction through this. You're going to be really relying upon the Holy Spirit and upon his word. And so you will learn a lot. You're going to learn things that are valuable. You're going to learn things that are eternal, things that are essential. In short, if I could say it this way, you're going to gain wisdom. Why is this important? When it comes to parenting, that is what you are imparting into the lives of your children, wisdom. Knowledge is what you impart to your children as their teacher, and there is a difference. Um, but they need the wisdom first. They don't get the wisdom from public school education. They might get knowledge, not the wisdom. So that's a very important fact, and I will get more into that a little bit later, but I just wanted to make a note of that to begin with. All right. Two things you probably lack, uh, but we'll gain these through this process as well. And one is a greater fear of God. Maybe you have a fear of God, but you'll definitely get a greater fear of God. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise uh, wisdom and instruction. A fear of man, if I'm honest, fear of man is, is really one of the primary reason, uh, reasons that, that Christians in particular do not homeschool. It's the fear of man. You're going to get challenges. You're going to get questions. People are going to think you're weird. People will think you're foolish. People are going to think you're harming your children. And you have got to put the fear of man away. You've got to fear God more. Um, we just think we, we need to meet the expectations of the world. And I want you to put those things uh, away. You're not here to meet the expectations of the world. You want to do, um, you want to be obedient to the Lord. Now, um, you're going to face questions. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll give you some answers to some of those questions later on today. But it begins with the fear of the, of, of the Lord, and you must fear God more than a man. Um, one thing on that, too, really, tr really try not to become hostage to the idea of what the world thinks uh, schooling is or education is, um, because it comes from the world system. We know the world system is a fallen uh, system. So one thing it'll do for you, a greater fear of God. The second thing, um, confidence. We want you to gain confidence from this. Um, many times we're just not sure that we're capable as parents, and we're not sure that we're qualified as parents. And that's, that's a natural to feel that, you know, we're not capable of things when you embark upon something new. How many of you are already homeschooling? Just by, just by show of hands, already doing that. All right. How, how many of you, well, this will be new, uh, or you're thinking about it, or... Okay, all right. Hopefully I don't discourage you today. <laughs> but I am trying to be honest and open about things. It's, it's, uh, parenting in it isn't easy and homeschooling is not gonna be easy. Uh, it you will really, really, really have to make sure you prioritize your, your things correctly in your uh, life. 
All right, but anyway, homeschooling is really uh, an extension of the teaching and training that you should already be doing in the lives of your children just as a parent. You're just extending that. So um, if you don't have confidence right now about that, whether you think you're not capable or qualified, listen, God gave you your children, which means God thinks you capable and God thinks you qualified. So remember those things. All right. Well, at the bottom of your sheet, this is something we take from our parenting. I do a little pop quiz. Three P's of parenting. Uh, if you were to guess a P, what would you say is one of the P's of parenting? One of the things that we are to do for our kids in parenting. You can, you can shout that out if you think you have one. Protect. Definitely. Protect is one of them. Obviously, we're supposed to protect our, our children. Uh, most of us do a good job with these, these things, by the way. Um, we understand that um, we want to protect our children from physical harm, um, but sometimes maybe we're, we, we, we're not sure about the psychological dangers that are out there. We do need to protect them from those things and the spiritual harm as well. All those things lump into to protect. What's another one, would you say? Provide? I hear provide. Absolutely. You want to provide food, shelter, clothing, all those things. Those are the most common ones. And most of us do a good job at those things. But there's a third one, and this is the one we maybe don't necessarily do as good a job as we should. What would you say that is? It's prepare. It's prepare. We, we provide, we protect, but as parents, we are to prepare them. And the question is, what are we preparing them for? You know, if you look at the world today, um, the, the world tells you all kinds of things. You're preparing them for a career. You're preparing them for a university. You're preparing them to be on their own. You're preparing them uh, to be sports stars. You're preparing them for a spouse. You're preparing them for all these things. And, and, and these may not be bad in and of themselves, but I need to ask you, is that really your job as a parent? Is that what you are preparing them for? Or are there more eternal things that you're preparing your children uh, for? What kinds of things are you teaching your, uh, your kids? Is university or a good job or making money, is that a, a sufficient uh, goal for you? Uh, is that the end goal of what you're preparing them for? That is hopefully what we're going to identify today. I wanted to give you the biblical mandate for what I believe um, homeschooling comes from, and it's on the next page for you. And it's Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 9, and the, the words are there. And it says this, these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Uh, we, biblical parenting class we do, we call it uh, Biblical Parenting 6.7. It's from the Deuteronomy 6.7 uh, there. But God has established in his word right there that parents be the primary, okay, the primary source of their children's uh, education. And it comes um, straight from the word of God. Now, right away, some people might be thinking, well, this is God's mandate in the Old Testament. Uh, it's, it's to Israel. Uh, it's a command to teach his law, and, and those things are all true. Let me give you a New Testament verse as well, and I think it's also on your sheet, um, Ephesians 6, 4. We're on page uh, two of your notes there. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And once again, we tend to look at these things and say, well, that's just, um, again, teaching them about the Lord. It's not about education. And we, in our minds, separate these two things. And I want to show you today that they're actually linked. Both things go hand in hand. And here's a thought that you need to think about when you think about public school education, the school system of the world. The school system assumes this, and I want this to sink into your head, that you don't need God to explain anything. That's what it automatically assumes. And so whether or not they directly attack your faith, directly attack the Bible, directly attack God or his existence does not matter. It just assumes you don't need God to understand math, to understand science, to understand relationships, right? And so you need to understand that this world system, the school system operates under an atheistic, humanistic world of view. And so if you're a Christian and you send your kids into public school education, uh, school system, but you want to be faithful to God's mandate here to teach them to, to um, obey his, his word, 
then the job on you is even greater. You're gonna have to have them come home, sit down, tell you everything they learned, identify everything that did not include God and his word in it, deconstruct that secular worldview, and rebuild a biblical, well, that's a lot of work. A lot more work than if you were to build from the ground up the biblical worldview that your children need. So you do need to understand that, that no matter where you put them in school, they um, are under attack, even if it is not an outwardly aggressive one. There's a quote in your sheet there from Robert Dabney. It says this, the education of your children for God is the most important business done on earth. It is the one business for which the earth exists. To it, all politics, all war, all literature, all money, all money making ought to be subordinated. And every parent especially ought to feel every hour of the day that next to making his own calling and election sure, this is the end for which he is kept alive by God. This is his task on earth. You ever think about that? You ever think about the, uh, the call in the church to evangelize, to go and make disciples of all nations, that it begins in your home, doesn't it? It begins with your own children. That's where it starts. It's great if we go out there and we focus on evangelizing the world and we put pamphlets in all the mailboxes of, of but if, you, if you've ignored that in, in your own family, then you have missed the whole point. So remember that the biblical mandate to train up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and to teach your children and you sit and when you walk and when you sleep and all those things, that means it's a constant, constant lifestyle of teaching your kids the truths about God. And that includes all the, th the things that happen in education. You want to all have all those things coming from a biblical perspective. Now, here are some common objections that come from our confusion, I think, over our role as parents. Uh, we confuse the things that we should protect them from uh, with the things that we should preparing them for. So when we looked at those three Ps, we also think provision is related to simply meeting their, their earthly needs when I think it's far uh, more. So here's one of them. That kind of falls under the provide. I've heard, I've heard this a lot. Our kids need a proper education if they're going to succeed in this world and if they, they can't get that at home. So aren't we failing to provide for them and also setting them up to fail? Isn't that my job? I'm to provide for them. Well, again, the secular world system is not about education. You, you really have to understand that, but particularly today. It's about indoctrination. That's what it's about. It is social engineering. It's social progressivism. That's what's happening. And so your kids are not getting education. In fact, they're being lied to today. They're not even being taught biology, are they? So you, you gotta wake up to the, 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 the truth of the education system today. Uh, I mentioned earlier that your job as a parent is to, uh, to give them wisdom. You remember that? And I just wanna read from Proverbs chapter two. If you have a Bible, you can turn there, but I'll just uh, read it uh, here. This, uh, Proverbs chapter two, this is coming from uh, the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon, it says, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Very simple uh, passage there, but it tells us something. It tells us this, that the Lord is the one that gives wisdom. The Lord gives wisdom. And the Lord's not given the wisdom to the teachers in the school. The Lord's given wisdom to you as a parent, and it's your job to pass that on to your uh, children. Why? Because they need the wisdom in order to apply the knowledge. They also need the wisdom in order to be able to discern fact from fiction don't they? They're getting a whole lot of fiction in the schools today, and they need discernment. So knowledge is what you want to impart to your child as a teacher. So if you stick them into that secular world system, remember they're not getting the wisdom, they're just getting knowledge, and they won't be able to uh, discern what they're hearing, whether that is a biblical thing, whether it's not. Your job is to give them the wisdom they need so they can discern those things. So that's one common objection. Another one uh, that you hear a lot and kind of falls under the uh, prepare, but it's really a protect because it's a confusion thing. I've heard this one a lot. Well, our kids need to be salt and light. Our kids need to be salt and light. So they need to be out there. We have to prepare them to be salt and light in the world. So we want them out there interacting uh, to live in the world. Yes, you, you, of course you do. You, you want to prepare your children for that. But listen, as a Christian parent, salt is what you are pouring into your children. You're doing that now. 
And I'll never forget one of the first uh, homeschool conferences I ever went to, because they have them in California. There was a picture of uh, a drawing of a, of a boy, but he was in the shape of a salt shaker kind of a thing. And there was salt being poured into the top of him. And then as it scrolled down, you just see it pouring right out the bottom. And that's the idea is that your children are young and right now you're filling them with salt. But if you take that little salt shaker and put it on the front lines and that's what you're doing, it's a spiritual battle taking place in the schools. That salt is number one, being poured right out the bottom. Number two, it's being corrupted. And when you think about Matthew 5, 13, that says you are the salt of the earth. What it tells us there that if the salt loses its fla flavor, it's good for what? Nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So you actually are not helping your uh, children there. And I think it's a little bit naive as well to put our kids in that battle because they're not equipped to handle it. Uh, right now, your kids need the equipping and you're pouring the salt in in these years. There will be a time when they're older, a lot older, where they'll be able to handle those um, aggressive attacks and the arguments and the things that will, uh, they'll come uh, come from, but I, I think you at this stage in your in your life when you've got these young ones in in your home You are giving the wisdom to them and you're pouring that salt in and don't let it go and get um, uh, Lose its flavor because then it's good for nothing There's a uh, old Chinese proverb <laughs> That says one generation plants the trees and another gets the shade you ever heard that and I, I think about this I think about as parents what kind of trees are we planting uh, for our, our children. How are you going to protect them from the scorching winds and the heat of this world? You, you have to protect them. And so people say, I'm preparing my child to be in the world, but really you need to be protecting them at this point. So that's a, a, confuse, a confusion over their job as a parent when people give that uh, objection. Another one is this one, and this is probably my favorite. What about socialization? And I just love that. It's probably the number one that we get. And when they, when they say that, um, I'm really excited because they say, well, hey, let me just ask, aren't you worried about socialization? To which I say, yes, that's why I'm homeschooling my kids. <laughs> exactly. Because what you do in a school system is you put them in there with their peers, with a whole bunch of immature kids their same age, the same age that lack knowledge, that lack wisdom, and they're all influencing one another. So how is that good? That is not good. Um, you don't want them to be in that situation. Um, that's the school system. And so they're teaching one another, they're learning one from another, um, and they're all in the same age group. But as, a home, as you homeschool your child, here's what's so important. You are the primary influence in their life. They're in, interacting with you primarily. But you're not locking them up from the world. They don't interact with nobody else. You know, you put them in the broom closet and that's it. That's the last year. Hopefully, they're, they're coming out with you and they're, they're in the church. They're involved in the church. And they're involved in serving in the church. They're involved in uh, children's ministry, your youth groups. And, and you're taking them wherever you can to interact, to learn. You're taking them to museums. As a parent homeschooling your kids, you have the freedom to do that, to let them interact with more people, but under your guidance and influence. And it's so, so much better. And it brings me to one of the points that we give in uh, our biblical parenting class, and that is this, that the, the child's most important influences must come from parents, not peers. It must come from you. They'll have influences from peers, but the most important influence must come from you as a parent. And I think whenever outside influence shapes a child's character more than the parents, then that's when the parents have failed. We, we feel like we can fail on so many fronts, but if you haven't been the primary influence in your child's life, that's not their fault. We have failed in our duties if we haven't done that. Parenting is a full-time assignment. You know, there's no coffee breaks, are there? Um, and I'm reminded of Judges chapter 2, and you, you'll know this section well. It's in verse 7. It says, the people served the Lord all the days of, of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. And when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel, which is a shocking passage. And then it says, it tells us what that next generation did. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them, and they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baals and the Asterisks. And then, of course, Judges ends with those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right. In his own eyes, sounds a lot like today. Why did that next generation 
walk away from the Lord because the parents had failed to be the primary influence in the lives of that next generation. You don't want to fall into that uh, trap. They will, um, they will be prepared to interact with the world. They will be prepared to interact with uh, others, but after you have prepared them for it. We don't throw them into it and then just hope they figure it out. So parents, you keep giving that preparation job to the peers and to the schools and you will fail there. Another excuse uh, or objection I will say we hear about this is, is I'm not equipped. Um, listen, you're taught that by society. Society says you gotta have a degree, you gotta have some certi certification of some kind. Um, that's not true, that's not true. God gave you your children. He says, you're equipped. I'm gonna give you them to you. And, and, and you are equipped, okay? And, and if, listen, if you fall into that, 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 that lie uh, that I'm not capable, I'm not qualified, then you're doubting God. So don't do that. Uh, we're going to try to give you resources today uh, and, and tools and helpful tips to just give you greater confidence. Um, and, and hopefully you'll feel a little better equipped. But listen, it's actually not that difficult in terms of how to go about it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Praise the Lord. So many faithful men and women have gone before us. So there's so much available to us. Honestly, you can just really pick up and run with it. And then as you start going, you'll start to make it your own. And my wife will cover a lot of those how-tos in the second session. But, but listen, God has already given you everything you need. You gotta trust him. You gotta trust him first, okay? I think of 2 Peter 1, 3. It says, has his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Did you note that? To life and godliness, God has given you everything Thing you need. So don't doubt what God has given you. Um, there's one more uh, objection. I think it's on the next uh, page. And it's, um, I can't. And um, that comes from a lot of different places. Sometimes that comes because I've heard this, oh, I can't. My kids are just too difficult. <laughs> you don't know my kids. Your kids, oh, they're great. But my kids, oh, my kids are so difficult. Well, First of all, that's more than likely not true because all of our kids are difficult because they're born sinners, okay? They, are, they, uh, they need to be redeemed. Um, but um, if it ends up being true, then partly that's due to the parent's fault or negligence in, in failing to establish the authority in the home. I'll touch on that a little bit uh, later, but um, all of our kids are, uh, are difficult. Another reason people say I can't, uh, it might be due to uh, learning disabilities. Maybe you've started and you've figured out, oh, there's some difficulties uh, here. We're going to talk about the difficulties um, later on in home education, uh, home educating a child with special needs. We had one and it's certainly possible. Uh, another reason I can't, we say I can't afford it. Can't afford it. Well, you know, we, we budget monthly for it. We put mon mon money into our budget so that it builds up because we usually buy curriculum at this time of year, every year, um, so that the money's there. And it, it does cost um, but the cost is worth it. I would just ask you, what are you willing to sacrifice? If it's a few more uh, uh, lattes that you're not having a, a week or whatever it might be to, to make sure that you can um, educate. But um, you can educate on any budget. In fact, Jody was showing me a website. It's uh, amblesiteonline.org. But uh, I believe it's in the resources. You put it there as well. But um, there's so much available to you. I also heard this, I give it a try. I gave it a try once um, and it was my fault. I wasn't organized enough. I wasn't focused enough. I wasn't motivated enough. And when you hear that, that's not really a, an I can't, that's an I won't. That's an I won't. So don't confuse that. Our circumstances won't allow for this. We both work full time. Uh, we heard that one recently, didn't we? Um, this, is an, this is also an I, I won't do it. Uh, do you really think I th that you'll be able to stand before Jesus and when he asks you if you, were, if, you, if you were diligent in your job, parenting your children and guiding them and educating them, that you'd be able to say, well, yeah, but I, we needed to make money. Uh, we, we needed to have a certain size house, so many cars. I'm not trying to guilt people. What I'm saying is I want to people evaluate their hearts and, and look how, how deeply are we really prior to prioritizing uh, this. I don't know if you heard about the education in Wales, the RSC education over there, but it's mandatory, the sex education. Parents cannot um, opt out of it. Um, and now they're seeing the ramifications of it. Three-year-old came home, straight into the room where the parents were, dropped the trousers down and started masturbating, threes. And said so the parent, but the child, uh, I'm sorry, the child said, teacher told me about this today. 
now the parents are waking up saying, what's, what's happening? But this has been happening. We've been praying about it as a church and trying to fight against it for the last three years. No one cared. Now it's happening. Now they're starting to go, what, what's, what's happening? Uh, this, is, this is horrific things that are happening. That's in Wales. It's only going to keep spreading and it's going to get worse. So I'm going to ask parents, you need to take inventory of your own hearts. Really, that's where it begins. Do you thirst for God as the deer pants for water? It has to start with your desire. Is your commitment to Christ what you hope to see in your child? You want that commitment? It's got to begin with you. And is your obedience to his word the same kind of submission you long to see from your own kids? They'll model it. So the attitude of your heart is the most uh, basic building block of, of parenting. Your worldview will impact how you go about parenting and obviously how you go about schooling. If you don't adopt the attitude of Psalm 127, verse 1, your home will look drastically different uh, uh, from those that don't. You need to adopt this. So Psalm 127, uh, verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. You got to remember that this is the, the, the Lord's house, your home is, and you want him to build it and you want to uh, trust him uh, with it. And he will, he will build it, but it's got to start with your own heart. Um, there are some great, uh, uh, great resources. There's a, a book. We brought a couple of books, but there's one that we were doing with our kids called uh, Training Hearts and Teaching Minds. And uh, we just started with things like that that we could just walk through our, with our kids. And, and it just sort of asks questions. Uh, what is God? Who is God? And, and gives you a, a paragraph uh, a day that you could just read with them and look up scripture. So there's so many great resources to help you kind of um, guide them. So you really need to consider whether or not that we really are uh, willing to provide, protect, and prepare our kids properly. Um, providing for our kids by placing them in a public education, is that really happening? Are you really protecting kids from harm? We need to protect them for the, the future. So what what uh, are we preparing them for then? What's the main goal? What's a good, good goal? If, if it's not necessarily uh, education, it's not degrees, it's not careers, it's not, what's a, what's a good uh, mission? I've got this on your notes there on page three. It says the real mission, and you might want to fill this in. This is what you're, you're preparing them for. Preparing my children for the glories of worshiping, serving, and enjoying God. The glories of worshiping, serving, and enjoying God. Do you believe that that's your end goal, that you are here to uh, glorify God and to enjoy him forever? Then shouldn't that be the end goal for your children as well? You see, you need a bigger picture and you need an end goal that is transcendent, that's greater than this world. Because you all have values. You all come from different homes. There's things that you value and values are different than beliefs and values are hard to change. Values are very difficult to change. And so why will your kids necessarily pick on your values unless they are something that's transcendent, greater than this world. Many people, many people go the opposite direction to their families because they didn't have the same value. They saw a lack of the value or they saw the hypocrisy in the values in the homes. So you want your kids to value something greater than you, okay? And so you need something that's um, eternally wor uh, worthy, spiritual, and their end game is to worship God and in to enjoy him. And this is best accomplished when we as parents take on that primary task of, of educating our kids and instilling in them the biblical worldview so that they understand that, that even math and even, even science really reflects the wonderful wisdom and creative power of God. It reflects you know, that God is a God of order and, and precision, and you're teaching them all these things as they're learning about the things that they need to, to, to learn about. Um, God is... It's not simply someone we want our kids to know about. We want them to know him, don't we? So it starts there. How do we prepare them for this? This is a big mission. How do we, how do, we do that? If that's our ultimate mission, then what's a better immediate mission? How do we get to that? Well, you want to teach them to fear God and obey his commands. You want to start there. Teach them to fear God and obey his commands. That's a great immediate um, uh, mission. You want to hear really to have the heart of David who said, in Psalm 40, verse 8, I delight to do your will, O oh my God, for your law is within my heart. So how do you begin with that? Well, this, is, this takes the training. This is the, the, the training part of uh, your role as parents. 
Ephesians 6, 4, we looked at earlier, said, your fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Now, I was a children's pastor, and I had um, uh, two, or the third one might have just been along the way, uh, children. Um, and, and when we were beginning to look at school, uh, in my mind, I never thought twice, they're just going to go to school. But my wife had a cousin who was homeschooling, and they were great kids, and they were great family, and I loved being around them. And my wife came to me one day and said, I think I want to homeschool the kids. And I went, what? What, is, what are you talking about? I just thought, well, that's a weird thing. What do you mean? Um, but anyway, I, 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 I gave in. I said, well, okay, yeah, I guess you want to do that. They're, they were young, you know. I said, you know, you're not going to ruin them that bad, you know. They're... And so I, I said, go ahead, I'll let you do it. And so for years, she, um, uh, and it was very basic, and most of it was happening while I was at work. Um, but she would go to these homeschool conventions regularly with her cousin just to kind of get refreshed. And one year, she said, I really like you to go. I really like... In fact, I think you said it a couple times. But I just couldn't fit it in with ministry. And so one year I said, I'd really like you to go. So finally I said, okay, all right, I'll go. I went to the first session, which is kind of the big one. And they have all these breakout things. I went to the big main session. And the speaker so convicted my heart about my negligence in leading my family. I was a children's pastor. I thought, well, my kids are getting it. They're at church all the time. They I totally get it. I wasn't doing that in the home. I wasn't training them in the home. And I certainly wasn't backing my wife up. I was like, well, that's your thing. You kind of do that. I was in tears, you know? And so it took me a few years to really kind of get on board. And then once I did, I realized, oh my goodness, how was I, how was I missing this? I was even sort of separating the sort of uh, spiritual from the home. It's so easy to do, but we've got to take this training idea right into the home. You, they're not going to get to that just at church. It's great that we have church and those things are to support the families, but the family, it must come there. And so that's why it says, you fathers, fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Now, those two words are important. That word training, paideia, is Christian discipline that regulates character instruction, which aims at increasing virtue. That's what that is. Another way to phrase that, and there's a little blank there, it's formative discipline. That's what it's called, formative <coughs> discipline. It's for the purpose of forming. It forms or it influences someone's development. That's the idea. The other word, the admonition word, that is the uh, corrective discipline. And you probably all know what that is. Okay. You're correct or you're counteracting something harmful. Well, those two things are used in your, your training. I'll primarily look at the uh, formative uh, discipline uh, today, but we cover the other one in our parenting. But you need to understand that... Um, the, 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 the children, when they're born into your home and they come in there, you have, you're overwhelmed. You have so many, so many things. Your, your mind's already thinking about university. Your mind's already thinking about you know, all these different things. You've got to bring it all in. What's a good immediate goal? This is the authority stage is what we call it. Usually zero to four, five-ish, somewhere. If your children are in that range, your main goal, your one job is to establish your authority in the home. So, so very important for kids to learn that because you are never not under authority. You're never not under authority. That's just part of being human. And with parenting, God has given you authority. He has. Um, you have no autonomous parental authority. You have representative authority. You represent God in their lives, and God has given that to, to you. And so the job of the Christian parent then, and there's a little blank there for you, is to make the invisible authority of God visible in the lives of your children. That's what your job is. It's, it's, it, they hear about God, and he, he has this invisible authority, but you want to make that visible in their lives. Well, that means every time that you exercise authority as a parent, it is supposed to be a beautiful picture of the authority of God. And you'll screw that up. You will, because you're fallen, just like me. He won't do that perfectly. Um, You'll exercise God's authority out of anger. You'll do it out of impatience or irritability or even self-righteousness. And you'll be demanding and you'll, you'll do those things because you're fallen. But you need to push past that. Don't give up. Continue. And it's so important because your kids are born believing two lies. And they come from the world. And you need to get rid of these lies early on in their life. And they're here. Lie number one is they believe they are autonomous. They're born believing that they're independent. And every time that you have a, a battle of wills, they are saying this. You will not rule me. That's what they're saying. I rule me. 
Uh, but they are ruled, and it's imperative that they come uh, to learn and accept that, that they have to come under authority. The second thing they believe is that they're self-sufficient. They believe that they have already everything inside themselves that they need to, to be and do what they're supposed to do, and they don't. So those are two lies, and if they continue to believe those lies, you don't, you don't touch those at all. They're going to suffer harm. And so you want to make sure you address those things. You want to teach them to live under authority, and that is a form of protection, isn't it? It is. Teaching your children to submit to authority is actually a positive thing. It's a positive thing. It teaches them, number one there, that they will always live under authority. Always. Because you're never not under authority. God is never going to relinquish his authority to them at some point. Oh, you've reached. Okay, there it is. They're always going to be under authority. And it's so important to understand that. Someday they're going to have a job and someone's going to be under authority over them. It's going to just continue. They're never not under authority. Number two, it's going to help them to accept your authority as they grow up. Number three, I think it's on the next page there, is that they will gain freedom which comes from living according to God's design and authority. Listen, when we accept that and, and we, we submit to God in that way, that's a freer way to live, isn't it? Uh, and then also, they'll not grow up believing a lie. That's number four. So, again, this is just sort of giving you a, 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 qu a quick snapshot of that authority stage. There's much more that we talk about. Uh, again, you can listen on our website, calvarycdf.uk. The link is um, on the back about that authority stage, but I really want to fo focus today, especially with time coming to an end, on the training stage. And that's really what you're talking about with the schooling ages. It's four to 12, somewhere in there. And um, in this stage is when we build on that, that foundation that we've laid um, and we focus on character development and we use the formative discipline and we use the corrective uh, discipline. And with the formative discipline, uh, where do you start? Well, formative discipline begins with understanding that your child's greatest need is regeneration. That's what they need. When you look into that child's eyes, you know, you see something there. What do you see? You know, they're, they're, they're a lost person. They're, they're, they're a sinner and they need regeneration. And so you need to, number one there, consider the, the condition of your kids. You know, they don't disobey because they're just cranky or tired or hungry. Uh, they disobey because they're descendants of, of Adam, <laughs> like you and I. That's why they disobey. And number two, you need to instruct your children then in the great matters of salvation. We want them to understand that behavior is, is not the issue. We can get so sidetracked as parents about the behavior. Mostly we do that because we want them to behave well in public because we don't want to look bad. We don't want to look like bad parents. Um, but listen, the behavior is not the issue. It's the heart. And you always want to bring it back to the heart. We want well-behaved kids, but ultimately we want that because it's come out of the heart, not just so that we, we look good. And we talk about that a lot uh, more in the um, parenting things, but I just wanted to give you an idea uh, there. So you want them to begin internalizing what you've been uh, teaching. And this is going to bring us full circle back to this Deuteronomy. If you want them to internalize everything that you're teaching them, you have to ask yourself, has it been internalized in me? I mean, ha have I really taken these things to heart? So this is first session is really a challenge to you parents. That's all I'm trying to do is give you the big picture. Say, listen, you're about to embark on something and it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not impossible, uh, but your whole heart needs to be God's completely. And so if you have internalized it, listen, then your kids are going to catch it because they're going to see Deuteronomy 6 lived out in your home. They're going to see it. And that's what I put out here. They're going to teach them about God which is the hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's Deuteronomy 6.4. They're going to hear it. They're going to see it all the time, that you are, are, are always talking about God and that you, 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 you love God. Deuteronomy 6.5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And you'll teach them to obey God from the heart. Again, not just outwardly, but inwardly in the heart, which is why you're always addressing the heart. You want them to um, behave and you want them to uh, obey, and we'll talk about obedience in the third one a lot more, but you want them to do it with a respectful, honoring attitude, because who are they honoring ultimately when they honor you? God. So you're, you'll teach them about those things, and you'll teach them to follow your example. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, 
when you lie down and when you rise up. So there's so much more that we could say on this subject, and, um, but it really begins here. You gotta remember that home, home education is firstly about educating your children in the great matters of salvation. All those other things are, are good, they're good. But I remember when I went to that session, that speaker said something to this effect. He said, listen, I began to look at this and said, you know, I, uh, my, my kids at the end of the day, they'll, they'll know how to add. They'll know how to subtract. Uh, they'll know how to write. The, and, and maybe they won't be the, the best mathematicians. Maybe they won't be the most eloquent writers. Uh, but they'll love God. Do you see? He's like, ultimately, I want them to love God. You can send them to a school and, and they could get the best education. But if they don't end up loving God, then you've really lost, haven't you? So it begins here. You've got to come to the understanding that when you, the children are in your home, you have such a wonderful opportunity to shape that child because there is a soul there, isn't there? A soul. We have um, so enjoyed the homeschooling process. It has been such a, I, w I wouldn't do anything else. It's been such a joy. My wife has done the, the lion's share of the work, obviously, but over the years, as my schedule has changed here and there, I've been able to take on more and do more little bit of things. I've always done the read alouds and things or the projects or I'm the one that cuts open the frogs and does those things because Jody's like, yeah, you have that one, right? But, but those things have been such a joy to just do along. You can do all these things at home. It's so easy to do. But even with that, you're always, you're always shaping character and addressing the heart. Even, even just this happened this weekend as you're preparing for this. You know, his son's supposed to be doing some science thing and, and he had it in his own head that he wanted to do his own way and, and he had already decided he just didn't want to do it. He's like, why can't I wait for tomorrow? Why can't I do this? It was all he's wise. And then he huffed and started reading. Oh, I don't understand it. Well, I knew it wasn't an understanding thing. I knew it was a heart thing because he already told me. Well, why do I have to do it now? I want to wait. I want to wait. I want to wait. And so we were able to stop and go, this is a heart thing. I need you to go off and get your heart right. And then we're going to do this the right way. And ultimately, he was able to get it done and do it. And so you have an opportunity to shape hearts through the process of learning. And that is the biggest thing you're trying to do. So just want to encourage you with a, kind of a big picture here. We're uh, almost at the noon time. And so we'll uh, take that little break. Is that right? And then um, we'll come back for session two. Thanks, folks. We're happy to talk with you afterwards and answer any questions you might have.